כאן קדוש, בוקר אור, מסכת במציאה, דף סמכת עמוד א', 68A1. We are starting a few lines down, four lines down, where it says, אמר רב אשי. רב אשי comes and he says, there's going to be two different statements speaking about the משכנתה. אמרו לי, סבא דה מטה מחסיה, the elders of סבא מטה מחסיה came, right, this was the city of רב אשי in Babel, in Babylonia. They said, סתם משכנתה, שטה. הסתם משכנתה is minimum of one year. למה אין אפקמין? מה צמא אפקמין? אדי אכל לשטה, אבל זה פי אייט. For one year, מצי מסלק לה, you could get rid of him. You could get out of it. So just like, you know, we have a סתם הלוואה is 30 days, סתם משכנתה is one year. They eat low, and if it's not going to be that one year, לא מצי מסלק לה, you can't get rid of him. ואמר רבשי, רבשי says another thing also. אמרו לי, סבא דמת מרכסיה, the elders of מרכסיה told me, מהי משכנתה? What is משכנתה? דשכונה גבה. That it's like the שכנה is by him, which means by the מלווה. which means that there's no shachen closer to him because he's actually there eating it. So now what's the nafkamina? So he says, Adina de Bar Metzra. Right? Remember that Adina de Bar Metzra, uh, I think they call it right a first refusal or yeah. something like that. Right? Basically, it's, it's that the closest property beside yours, you have the rights, the first rights to uh, purchase it. That's called Dina de Bar Metzra. So a person that comes and he sells his field, Obviously, the closest one is able to buy it. So, so too, in our case, if the Love wants to sell his field, the Malve is the first person that could buy it because he's the closest to it. So it comes out that since he's eating from the field because he's eating because of your loan, he is the closest of the right of first refusal. Okay? Which actually is very interesting. So you understood that, Richard? One more yeah. time. You came right now and you borrowed money from Mordechai. And now you have to pay back Mordechai. So Mordechai went into your field and he's using... The fruits of the field. He is the Dina de Bar Metzah. So even before your two neighbors on your right and your left, he is the first right of refusal. So if you want to sell your field, he's the first one that gets the first grabs of buying the field. Yes, and he's actually in your property eating. That's why it's called Mashkanta. Mashkanta is the Shunaga Be, the, 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 the residents are by him. So Keilu, he's there right now. So he's got the right of first refusal. So Amar Rava, Rava comes and he says, The halacha is not like the tarshe pupunai, not like the shtare mechuznai, and not like the chachire, right? The right chachire nanshai. So we're going to explain what's going on exactly. So the halacha is not like the tarshe pupunai, the tarshe de Rav Papa. The Gemara above in 65a explains that Rav Papa used to sell date uh, beer. very expensive for money, right, that he was getting in order to pay back. And afterwards, it was going to, you remember, it would go up in price later on. But you remember his beer was very good, so it could have lasted until the expensive season. Right? Exactly. So it says it was going to be permitted because he wasn't actually gaining anything, right? Because basically, he could have waited until the expensive season and sell the, sold it there. Right? So he's not gaining anything of a loan. So he says, but the lechaz not like him. Why? Because if the person could have had the money, He would have been able to pay back right, right now. He would have bought something at a cheaper price right now. So therefore, the halacha is not like him. Shtar mechuznai, the halacha is not like the shtarot of bnei mechuza. The zavke le ravcha akarna vekatvi le bishtara. Because they used to put the, the schora to the, the schora is the merchandise. They used to put it for the salesmen. So they used to sell it for them for half the price. That means basically if they come and they sell, they get 50% of the profits. And then they used to come and say, how much is the profits? And they used to put it together with the principal and write it in a document. So therefore, it comes out that he used to give the Esa the Shtar al-Chayav that a certain amount, and it was actually half of it. Now, the Allah is not like that, because you're not allowed to do that, because me and my David Rabcha, whoever told you you're going to sell everything, you're going to get a profit. I Meaning you can't start putting that in a document if whoever said it was going to sell, and whoever said it, you're going to have a profit. So therefore, it's actually the beat. It's like uh, taking interest. Amal le mor bar ameimah le ravashi. Says mor ameimah to ravashi. Yeah, my father used to do this. And when people used to come, they used to believe him. So therefore, he's not actually taking the beat because they used to actually believe him and they would only ask him for the principle, not for the... Meaning it's like, you know, sometimes you sell things and sometimes, you know, milk goes bad or, you know, some merchandise goes bad. So therefore, if you're going to come and I'm already going to charge you already for the, the 50% of the profit, whoever said there's going to be a profit. So he says, no, but my father used to do it. And they used to believe him, meaning they only used to take the principle. Right? Meaning that, let's say there was one or two bad, whatever, they used to take whatever it was, and that's it. Samalei says, 
That's only good if he has it in himself. But what happens if the guy dies? And now they come in front of Yitomim. Now what's going to happen? It's going to look like Rebit. The guy himself is there, fine. But he could say it went bad. But now let's say the guy Misken, he passed away. And now he leaves in front of Yitomim. So now what's going to happen now? Exactly, they're not going to believe him. So, that's exactly what happened. The son of Morbe Barameimar said this to Ravashi, and it was like a mistake said by the big master. And because he said that, Amimar passed away. Well, yeah, exactly. To be very, very careful with his words. Because he went and he said, What's going to happen if the guy passes away? Now they're not going to believe him. That he second he said that the guy passed away. Yeah? The third one. What's the third one? Right? Of the city of Babel. They used to write, Ploni, he gave a mashkon of the Sadeh, meaning he borrowed money, and he gave him as a collateral the field, and then he went and he started working it for him. So therefore, he went and he started working it as, you understand what happened? So again, Richard borrowed money from Mordechai. He gave Mordechai his field as a collateral, but then he started working the field. You, you, you again started working your own field, which you gave as a collateral to Mordechai as a hakira. Hakira is like a sharecropper type of a, of a thing. And therefore you have to actually give him a certain amount per year of uh, fruits. So it comes out that the revach, that the the gain that you, that the, that he's actually taking is not anymore in the alva'a, it's on the hakirut of the field. Meaning now that Mordechai is taking the, the from you, he's not taking from you anymore on the field. He's taking it on the hakirut anymore. So emat So when is the malve going to acquire until he's going to be acquiring it again back? It's not his. So it comes out that the money of the hakirut is like ribit kitzutza. It's not on the halva. Meaning like this: Richard borrowed a hundred thousand dollars from Mordechai. Right? What happens? He gives to Mordechai his field. Now Mordechai comes and he tells Richard, I need somebody to work the field. So Richard comes and he starts working the field for Mordechai. And he tells Mordechai, I'm going to give you, let's say, $10,000 a year worth of fruit. It comes out, it comes out that that $10,000 a year of fruit is actually a fixed interest. Because from the beginning, that land is really Richard. It was only given him as collateral. It's not, And he's not like taking the fruits and he's deducting it from the sale. He's like from the loan. He's not doing that. So therefore, it's like a bit kitsutza. It's like a fixed interest that's going on over here. Like, what's going on? So he says, But now that we write, Kanina mine, that he acquires it from him, the Shahina Kama Idane Bahadar Khakara, he actually acquired it. And then it was going to be him by a certain amount of time of eating the fruits. And then afterwards, he gave it to him as the sharecropper. In order not to close the doors and people lending out money, it's going to be permitted. Because since basically he was there for for uh, you know a few years, a long time, so yeah. then exactly so if it's like his, so then he's allowed to do so. The love miltahi. However, though it's not true, even though they actually went and he was there for a few years, it's still considered rebit gimura, hundred percent of rebit, and therefore you're not allowed to do such a thing. Okay, Mishnah and Moshevin Henvani lemachatzit sachar. You you cannot the balabai cannot tell a Henvani right. Accept this amount of fruits that the value is certain amount and sell it for me, right? And uh, you're going to, and then we're going to divide the. So imagine I go to you, you're the storekeeper. Yeah, let's say Rafi's the storekeeper. And, uh, right, and Mordechai comes to Rafi, he says, Yeah, you're the storekeeper, here's the fruit, right? And you sell it, we split the profits. You can't do that. You can't give also money to the Khenmani in order to purchase fruits. Right for half of it as well. Okay. Unless he's paying him like a worker, because if not, it looks like a beat. So you have to pay him like a worker. And Moshevin Tarnegolin Lemechza, you cannot give a person cannot come and give the beitzim of a balatarnegolet, right, with a certain price and everything, in order that they should come and then take the chickens and divide the uh, the appreciation between them. Which is that which they're going to become more than the actual eggs, or the end shamina galinu sachin. You're not going to take the value of the egel and the siachin. These are like uh, young horses or calves, uh, to that you give to the shepherd lemechza. Ela inken noten lo schar amalovas. He has to give him a salary. Umezono and the mezonot. 
Yes, for the same reason we mentioned by the Chemani. Exact same reason, meaning that it's going to be a problem of Rebini, it could be a problem of Rebit. So therefore you have to give him a salary as well. Right, but if not, it's going to be a problem of Rebit. But you do do Agalim Nusachil Lemetza without putting the money at the beginning on condition that if they die, he doesn't have to pay anything. And if they live, so then, um, then they will divide it. And you're allowed to grow them up at until they go to a third of their growth, and then they divide it. And then you're allowed to grow it up until it's able to carry burdens. Okay, obviously we're going to see the, okay, there's a footnote, there's Rashi says, that was their minhag to give over the animals to shepherds until they grow a certain amount, and then afterwards he used to give it to the balabai back. It was like, you know, that he was in charge of, you know, taking over the, the animals. Fine. Says the Gemara. Tana. What does it mean that you have to give him a wages? It says here, you have to pay him like a person that doesn't work. You know, like a guy that doesn't uh, work much. That's what you have to actually give it to him. My kapol batel. What does it mean, kapol batel? Says the Gemara on Samechet and Bet 68b. Exactly. Amar Baye, kapol batel shotam melachad batel mine. Right? He says, it's like going to be a kapol batel of that melacha. So that means you're going to come, you're going to tell him, you know, I'm going to give you money, but you don't have to actually do it. That means, for example, so it says the Gemana, Utsrichai, we needed both of the cases. Why? Meaning we needed the first case of the Chenvani. Well, he says, why? If we only talked about the storekeeper, which was the first case of the Mishnah, Chenvani would decide, because you could tell him, listen, it's worth it. You should do it because he doesn't work a lot. What does the storekeeper do already? But if you're going to come and then there's a lot of work that you have to come, you have to get the fruits, you have to go one place, another place, you have to drive all, all, all the way to the farms and get these fruits. I would say there's not enough for uh, Batel. Right? Why? Because you need like a full uh, payment. You understand? Like you need a full uh, thing. And if you're going to tell me, it's only going to be the money that you get the fruits. Only there because there's a lot of work. But a chemini that you don't have a lot of work, you can give them a little. Uh, you give him a little, uh, how do you call it, a little bone. Yeah, you give him a little something, and that's it. That even if you're just going to give him something like very small, like, you know, that you give him a little bit of bread and this, uh, to eat, or go get it, well, that's already enough. That's why you need both cases, which means at the end of the day, every business is going to be different, Richard. So a lawyer, right, that he's making up, so for him to be batel, it's going to be completely different than just a security guard, right? Or a, or a storekeeper, you understand? Or like a, you know, a cashier, you understand? In a store. So therefore, obviously, there's going to be differences between. Okay? Tell Rabbanam, we learned in Abraita. Kama hu scharo. How much is the reward of the mekabela yiska? Ben merube u ben muat. Whether we're talking about a lot or a little bit, these are the words that are going to mean. Rabbi Yudah Omer, Rabbi Yudah says, Afiru lo tavalimo. Right, Even if it's going to be that you didn't do it, and it's going to be with the bread or whatever it is with the dagim, even if you give him one date, that's scharo. Shimon Omer, Shimon Bar Yochai says no. You have to pay him the full wages. And the second brayta, you're not going to value it, not the goats, not the sheep, or anything which does not do uh, work, which means. That the reward is not enough to take out the uh, the the gastos, because the expenses of what it costs to eat the mechza. Rav Yosef Yudaomer means that the cost of the sheep is even more expensive than what you're gaining from the sheep. Rav Yosef Yudaomer shamim etayizim. We are going to come and evaluate meshech olvot because they give milk. Veterechelim b'meshech ozov because you have the shearings of the wool. Veshotfot right, and then when it's uh, Right when they go through the water, right, it comes and takes out the water, the 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 how do you call it, the wool, and then a hand. right, and also the same thing exactly. right, also it says over here because they're going to do the 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 eggs and therefore you're able to eat the tanakam and according to the tanakam gizav echalav lo sipek right lischara malo the shearings of the wool or the milk are not enough for the rewards or for the or for the food. Right? He says, why not? You know, these things, they make a lot of money. What? Eggs and, and the shearings of wool. Wool and eggs, they don't make a lot of money. He says, you're right, 100%. There it's correct. When is a machlok between Tarakam and Rabbi Yosef Yudah? Nesiyube is 
is that it's not in the milk in itself. Right. He's only taking the whey, which is comes from the milk, or the tutore, which is basically the it's not the actual wool, mm-hmm. it's a little pieces. So therefore, that's not enough. Meaning you're right, milk and the egg that, that for sure is enough yeah. money. That's substantial. This is so little, that's why it's not substantial. Okay, Tanakama Savala Kabishum Yuchai is Tanakama holds. Like he says, you have to actually give him the full wages. He says, even if you just give him the little bit to dip or whatever, or one fig, that's already a dried fig, that's already going to be enough. A woman could come, and that she has a tanagole, she could come and give to the, to that it has beitzim, she could tell her, listen, give me the beitzim, and I'm going to give you the tanagole, Right to go on top of them, and then we're going to go and have it, and then meaning that the tanegolot will come and fertilize the eggs in order to make the more tanegolot. So Yisha Shamra the Chavarta tanegolot sheli betzim shelechi that the tanegolot is mine and the betzim are yours. Vani va'ad nachlo befuchim. But then we come and we divide in the in the chicks. Rabbi Yehuda says it's permitted, and Rabbi Shimon says that it's going to be prohibited. Why? Because since they said lashon chaluka, which is like a division. Right, so therefore he comes and he says, uh, since he says it's going to be a division, he comes and he says, so since they said lashon chaluka, it comes out that they kilu, they did it that they should still stay when they're alive, and if they're going to die, so then she's also going to lose out. So it comes out that since she's also taking like a fifty-fifty, you know, partnership in it, so therefore that's why it's considered, um, the it's going to be considered like a halva, like a loan, and therefore there's an issue of rebit if she does it for free. So therefore, obviously, she's going to have to take a wage for this. Okay, that's what we're saying until now. So it says the Gemara, Rabbi Yehuda lo ba'i schara malo mezano. It says, one second, according to Rabbi Yehuda, you don't have to actually pay the work plus mezonot, meaning plus the food of the, of the animals. So answers the Gemara, no, you do have it. Why? Because you have a beitzim muzarot. Beitzim muzarot means that you have sometimes okay, eggs okay, that they don't right. become fertilized. So those eggs that don't become fertilized, that's the reward. Yeah, exactly. So therefore, you get the reward, and that's the reward. Okay. Next says the Gemara. Tan Rabbanan we learned in the Brayta. Makom shenagula alot schar katef lemaot lebema. In a place where they give schar katef for the animal, which means that they used to give, whether it's like you know these uh, animals, right, to the people to grow them up, like to the shepherds. And what happened was they used to take half of the wages and half of the loss. So you have to pay them like a sabal. It's just basically that they take out, you know, like the, the animals and everything. So ma'alin, you have to give it to them. But you never change from the minhag of the medina. You always come and evaluate, right, the animal with the mother, whether it's talking about the young horse with the mother or the calf with the mother, right, in order to do it. And even if it's going to be mekabel, right, to do that, you always do that as well. And Rashbag comes and he says, what? You don't have to give him at least the reward, the, meaning the salary and the parnasav, the, meaning the food, the expenses of the food. And so you have the excrement. And the excrement was was because the excrement is fertilizer. So that in itself is money. So for you able to use that. So Vidach, ah, the one that argues on that, he says, no, glalim was made into a fked. So since the excrement of an animal was made into a fked, so therefore... Um, you cannot count that as if to say that I'm using that as your wages no. because it's all this. It's made hefka. So Amr of Nachman says of Nachman, Alacha is like a Yehuda, but Alacha is like a Yosef of Yehuda, which and then Alacha is like a Bishim Gamliel. So Alacha is like a Yehuda in the first Brayta that even if he only gave him a little bit to dip his bread or even uh, one dry date, it's enough. You don't have to actually give him a fixed wage. Even Mama, she gave him a little bit something that's already enough. Alacha is like a Yosef of Yehuda in the second Brayta that you're allowed to give the. The sheep and the and the goats and everything for half. He says, why? Because of the little bit of the milk, which is the whey, and the little bit of the things. Meaning that we're going lenient in all these cases. So if you know you're only getting a little bit, it's going to be enough. And the lachaz, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. And the lachaz like Rashbag, that he's basically saying like the fourth brayta, right? Which basically says that we're going to evaluate the mother, right, of, of the sheep and the mother, everything with the mother, what to do with the galalim? Because the galalim, the excrement is considered the wages and since it's considered wages Benera Vilish the children of Vilish Nafi Kalai who Shtara there was a star that came out, out for them after the death of their father Davaktiv Beder was written Palga Ba'agar half of the of the of the benefits of the of the gains 
right? Is and half the losses. So I'm a Rabbi Rabbi says, Ravili Shkavra Rabbi, he was a great person. The Surah Lein Shilav is having, I'm not going to give any suit for that. It doesn't make sense that the Shtar was exactly like that because again, you have to give him something. So therefore, for sure, we have to explain the Shtar as saying that he's going to be Zoche and half of the Revach and half of the Efsed. So Manashach, Ipal Gabe Agar, if he's going to be Maskim to half of the gains, so Trey Tilate Bev said, so therefore he's going to be Mekabel two thirds of the Efsed. Because there was no man. Exactly. So how could it be? Because obviously he wasn't doing, uh, he no, wasn't yeah. doing any suit. No, because, yes, because no. they're saying, they're saying that it doesn't exist that Rav Elish did an isu. Like, it doesn't make sense. Rav Elish was doing an isu. Obviously, there had to be something a little bit deeper here because he's not going to be giving an isu to a guy. Like, it just doesn't make sense. There had to be something that we're not understanding. That's what he's trying to say. And if you're going to tell me now, it's half of the said. So, so there has to be two-thirds, right? That has to be in the, of the, not half, it has to be two-thirds. So therefore, the extra, that is the schar tircha, meaning that he's saying that the the wages or the salary has to be the extra third. That's what he's trying to say. Okay. You understand? That's what he's trying to say in order that there's not going to be a problem of repeat and we'll continue with the Hashem tomorrow.